in an unprecedented display of nature's fury, China finds itself grappling with the aftermath of a cataclysmic flood that has left a trail of devastation in its wake. Bridges and dams, once symbols of engineering marvel, lie in ruins, swept away by the relentless torrents. This disaster, which many are calling a divine warning, has plunged the nation into a state of crisis, testing the resilience and spirit of its people. As the waters recede, the scale of the destruction becomes heartbreakingly clear, with communities displaced and infrastructure shattered. Join us as we delve into the harrowing events that have brought China to its knees, exploring the causes and the message that God want to send to this country. A powerful storm with hail has recently wreaked havoc in northern China, leaving a trail of destruction and chaos in its wake. This catastrophic event has not only disrupted daily life, but has also ignited a fervent debate among locals and global observers alike. The magnitude and suddenness of the storm have raised questions about whether such natural disasters are signs from a higher power or indications that the end times may be near. The storm struck with an intensity that residents had not seen in decades. Hailstones the size of golf balls pummeled the region, damaging homes, vehicles, and crops. The agricultural sector, which is a crucial part of the local economy, suffered significant losses as fields of wheat and corn were decimated. Farmers who had worked tirelessly through the seasons watched in despair as their livelihoods were destroyed in a matter of minutes. In urban areas, the hail shattered windows and dented rooftops, causing extensive property damage. Power lines were brought down, plunging communities into darkness and disrupting communication networks. Amidst the physical destruction, a different kind of turmoil was brewing. The storm's unprecedented ferocity has led many to question its origins. Was this merely a freak weather event, or was there a deeper, more ominous significance? In a society where traditional beliefs and modern science often intersect, the storm has become a focal point for discussions about divine intervention and eschatology. Some religious leaders have seized upon the event as a clear sign from God. They argue that the storm is a manifestation of divine displeasure, a warning to humanity to mend its ways. Sermons in local churches and temples have taken on a more urgent tone, emphasizing themes of repentance and spiritual awakening. In a country where religious expression is often subdued, these voices have resonated deeply, tapping into a vein of existential fear and uncertainty. On the other hand, scientists and meteorologists have been working tirelessly to provide a rational explanation for the storm. They point to climate change as a significant factor, citing increased atmospheric instability and higher global temperatures as contributing to the severity of such weather events. This perspective is supported by a growing body of evidence that links human activity to more extreme and unpredictable weather patterns. Meteorologists have noted that northern China has experienced a marked increase in severe weather events over the past decade, suggesting that this storm may be part of a broader trend rather than an isolated incident. However, the scientific explanation has done little to quell the anxieties of those who see the storm as a harbinger of the end times. Apocalyptic narratives have found fertile ground, with some interpreting the storm as one of the many signs foretold in religious texts. Social media platforms have been abuzz with speculation and prophecy, with hashtags related to the end times trending as people share their fears and theories. This phenomenon is not unique to China. Throughout history, natural disasters have often been viewed as omens of divine wrath or cosmic upheaval. The debate over the storm's significance also reflects broader societal tensions. In a rapidly modernizing country like China, where traditional values and beliefs are constantly being challenged by technological and economic progress, events like this storm can act as a catalyst for reflection and, in some cases, resistance. For some, the storm is a reminder of the fragility of human existence and the limits of our control over nature. For others, it is a call to reaffirm faith and find solace in spiritual beliefs. As the region begins the long process of recovery, these questions will continue to loom large. The storm has left behind more than just physical destruction. It has stirred a collective consciousness, forcing a confrontation with existential questions that are as old as humanity itself. Are we witnessing the whims of a capricious nature 
Or is there a divine hand at play? Is this a prelude to even greater upheavals? Or can we mitigate future disasters through better understanding and preparation? The storm in northern China serves as a poignant reminder of our vulnerability in the face of nature's power. Whether viewed through the lens of faith or science, it underscores the need for resilience and adaptability in an uncertain world. As communities come together to rebuild, they will also be grappling with these deeper questions, seeking to find a balance between the tangible and the transcendental, the immediate and the eternal. The answers may not be clear-cut, but the process of seeking them is a fundamental part of the human experience. The storm, with all its destructive force, has opened a space for dialogue and introspection, challenging us to confront our beliefs and assumptions. Whether it is seen as a sign from God, an indicator of the end times, or a consequence of climate change, it is a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of our world and the profound impact of natural forces on our lives. Floods and huge storms have recently unleashed their fury on China, with the province of Guangdong bearing the brunt of this natural onslaught. These powerful storms, marked by torrential rains and relentless winds, have caused widespread devastation. The most alarming being the collapse of several key bridges. This catastrophic sequence of events has not only disrupted the daily lives of millions, but also instilled a deep sense of dread and concern among the population, especially among those who perceive these events as manifestations of divine retribution. Guangdong, a bustling province known for its economic vitality and dense population, has been transformed into a landscape of chaos and destruction. The unyielding rains have swollen rivers and inundated urban and rural areas alike. Streets have turned into rivers, homes have been submerged, and vast tracts of agricultural land have been rendered unusable. The economic impact is colossal, with damages running into billions of yuan. However, the physical destruction pales in comparison to the psychological impact on the affected communities. Among the most dramatic and harrowing incidents resulting from these storms has been the collapse of several major bridges. These structures, vital arteries for transportation and commerce, crumbled under the immense pressure of the floodwaters. The sudden and violent nature of these collapses not only disrupted logistics and communication, but also claimed lives and left many injured. Rescue teams have been working tirelessly to find survivors and provide aid to those stranded by the destruction. The sense of helplessness and fear has been palpable, with the populace looking on in horror as their lifelines were severed by the ferocity of nature. In the wake of such devastation, a wave of existential dread has swept through Guangdong. For many, these events are not merely natural disasters, but are perceived as ominous signs. Believers, particularly those with strong religious convictions, have begun to voice concerns about divine punishment. The idea that these powerful storms and ensuing floods are a form of retribution from a higher power has gained traction, fueled by religious leaders who see these events as warnings to humanity. Sermons and religious gatherings have increasingly focused on themes of repentance and moral rectitude, urging people to seek forgiveness and amend their ways. Throughout history, natural disasters have often been interpreted as signs from the divine, warnings of impending doom, or calls to moral and spiritual awakening. In the case of Guangdong, the rapid succession of storms and the dramatic impact on vital infrastructure have only heightened these anxieties. Social media platforms have become rife with discussions about the end times, divine anger, and the need for collective atonement. Hashtags invoking religious themes and end-of-days prophecies have trended, reflecting a widespread unease and search for meaning amid the chaos. In a rapidly developing country like China, where economic progress often comes at the expense of environmental stewardship, these storms have become a flashpoint for deeper existential questions. Are these disasters a consequence of human hubris and neglect? Or are they warnings from a higher power demanding a return to moral and spiritual values? As Guangdong begins the arduous process of recovery, these questions will continue to loom large. In the aftermath of such profound destruction, there is an opportunity for reflection and change. The storm has exposed the vulnerabilities and shortcomings in both the physical infrastructure 
and the social fabric of Guangdong. It has highlighted the need for better disaster preparedness, more resilient construction practices, and a greater emphasis on sustainable development. At the same time, it has underscored the importance of community, faith, and the human need to find meaning in the face of adversity. The debate over whether these events are a form of divine punishment or a consequence of human actions will likely continue. What is clear, however, is that the response to such disasters requires a holistic approach that integrates scientific understanding with cultural and spiritual sensitivities. It is a reminder that in our interconnected world, the impacts of climate change and natural disasters transcend physical destruction touching on the very core of human existence and belief systems. As the world witnesses increasingly catastrophic events, believers are being urged to rely on Jesus Christ and prepare for the prophesied end times. Recent disasters in China, characterized by celestial signs and spiritual warfare, have intensified these calls, as many interpret these occurrences as forewarnings of the impending apocalypse. The scale of devastation and the frequency of such events have led to widespread fear and speculation, particularly among those who adhere to biblical prophecy. The belief that these disasters signal the beginning of the end times has galvanized many Christians to reaffirm their faith and encourage others to seek solace in Jesus Christ. The disasters in China have been particularly harrowing. Massive floods, severe storms, and unprecedented weather patterns have ravaged the land causing immense destruction and loss of life. The physical damage is visible and tangible, collapsed buildings, submerged homes, and displaced populations. Yet for many believers, the true significance lies beneath the surface. They see these disasters as part of a divine plan, a manifestation of spiritual warfare that transcends the physical realm. This perspective is rooted in the interpretation of biblical prophecies that speak of celestial signs and upheavals heralding the end times. Among the most compelling aspects of these beliefs are the celestial signs. Throughout history, unusual astronomical events have been seen as omens. In recent years, phenomena such as blood moons, solar eclipses, and unusual planetary alignments have been interpreted by some as warnings from God. These celestial events, occurring in conjunction with terrestrial disasters, are viewed as evidence of divine intervention. Believers cite passages from the Bible, such as those in the book of Revelation, which describe signs in the heavens that will precede the return of Christ and the final judgment. These interpretations have led to a heightened sense of urgency among Christians who feel compelled to prepare for the imminent end times. The concept of spiritual warfare adds another layer of complexity to this narrative. Spiritual warfare refers to the battle between the forces of good and evil, a struggle that is believed to be intensifying as the end times approach. This battle is not limited to the physical world, but extends into the spiritual realm where demonic forces and angels clash. For many Christians, the disasters in China are seen as manifestations of this cosmic conflict. They believe that Satan and his minions are actively working to bring about chaos and destruction, targeting humanity in a bid to thwart God's plan. This belief is reinforced by accounts of miraculous interventions and signs that suggest divine protection and guidance for those who remain faithful. In response to these events, religious leaders and communities are urging believers to deepen their faith and prepare for the end times. This preparation is both spiritual and practical. Spiritually, believers are encouraged to seek a closer relationship with Jesus Christ through prayer, repentance, and adherence to biblical teachings. Churches and Christian organizations are holding special prayer meetings, fasting sessions, and study groups focused on eschatology, the study of the end times. The aim is to strengthen the spiritual resolve of believers, helping them to withstand the trials and tribulations that are expected to precede Christ's return. Practically, preparation involves ensuring that individuals and communities are ready to face the challenges that may arise during the end times, this includes stockpiling food, water, and other essential supplies, creating emergency plans, and building networks of support within the Christian community. The emphasis is on being vigilant and proactive, recognizing that the physical and spiritual realms are interconnected. 
By preparing materially and spiritually, believers hope to navigate the coming trials with faith and resilience. The belief that one-third of the Earth's population will be wiped out during the end times is a particularly sobering aspect of this eschatological view. This idea is drawn from interpretations of biblical prophecy, particularly the book of Revelation, which speaks of widespread death and destruction as part of God's final judgment. For those who hold this belief, the current disasters in China and elsewhere are seen as harbingers of this larger, more catastrophic event. The sense of impending doom is palpable, driving a fervent effort to evangelize and bring others to faith in Christ. The urgency is not only to prepare oneself, but also to save as many souls as possible before it is too late. This apocalyptic outlook has a profound impact on the daily lives of believers. It shapes their worldview, their interactions with others, and their priorities. Many Christians who subscribe to these beliefs find themselves increasingly focused on spiritual matters, often at the expense of worldly concerns. Their faith becomes a lens through which they interpret global events, seeing divine significance in the chaos and turmoil that others might attribute to natural or human causes. This perspective fosters a sense of community and solidarity among believers who support one another in their preparations and share a common goal of enduring the end times faithfully. However, this belief system also faces skepticism and criticism. Critics argue that such interpretations of biblical prophecy can lead to fear-mongering and distract from addressing pressing global issues through practical means. They caution against reading too much into natural disasters and celestial events, advocating for a more balanced approach that considers scientific explanations and promotes resilience through preparedness and cooperation. These differing viewpoints highlight the tension between faith-based interpretations and secular understandings of global events. The recent disasters in China have heightened the sense of urgency among many Christians who believe that these events are signs of the impending end times. The interpretation of celestial signs and spiritual warfare as indicators of divine judgment has galvanized believers to rely more deeply on Jesus Christ and prepare both spiritually and practically for what they see as the approaching apocalypse. This belief in imminent, large-scale destruction and divine retribution profoundly shapes the lives and actions of these believers, fostering a community united by faith and a shared sense of purpose. As the world grapples with increasing uncertainties, the tension between religious and secular interpretations of events continues to challenge our understanding of faith, resilience, and the future of humanity. In recent years, China has been besieged by a series of unprecedented natural disasters, each more catastrophic than the last. This relentless barrage of calamities, ranging from devastating floods and earthquakes to severe storms and landslides, has not only caused extensive physical destruction, but has also stirred profound spiritual introspection among the faithful. Many believers interpret these events as a divine warning, a stark message underscoring the dire consequences of defiance against God's will. To them, these disasters signal a clarion call to prepare for the imminent reign of Christ, urging repentance and spiritual readiness. The scope and scale of these disasters are truly staggering. Torrential rains have led to massive flooding, submerging entire towns and displacing millions of people. In cities like Zhengzhou, Unprecedented downpours have transformed streets into rivers, overwhelming drainage systems and causing catastrophic infrastructure failures. In rural areas, the floods have obliterated crops, jeopardizing food security and livelihoods. The economic toll is immense, but the human cost is even more devastating, with countless lives lost and families torn apart. Earthquakes have further compounded the nation's woes. In provinces such as Sichuan and Yunnan, the ground has trembled with violent intensity, toppling buildings, triggering landslides, and leaving a trail of death and destruction. Rescue efforts have been heroic, yet often insufficient in the face of such overwhelming natural forces. Survivors, traumatized and homeless, face the daunting task of rebuilding their lives from the rubble. For many believers, these disasters are not random acts of nature, but are seen as clear signs of divine displeasure. They interpret these calamitous events 
as direct consequences of humanity's defiance against God's laws and an urgent call to repentance. This perspective is deeply rooted in biblical teachings, where natural disasters are often depicted as instruments of divine judgment and catalysts for spiritual awakening. Passages from the Old Testament, such as the story of Noah's flood or the plagues of Egypt, resonate strongly with these interpretations, drawing parallels between ancient divine retribution and contemporary events. Religious leaders across China have seized upon these disasters to underscore their spiritual significance. Sermons in churches and underground house gatherings echo with themes of repentance, obedience, and the need for spiritual preparedness. Believers are urged to examine their lives, renounce sinful behaviors, and renew their commitment to living according to biblical principles. The message is clear. These disasters are a wake-up call, a divine admonition to turn back to God before it is too late. This sense of urgency is compounded by the belief in the imminent return of Christ. Many Christians interpret the increasing frequency and severity of natural disasters as signs of the end times, as foretold in the New Testament. The book of Revelation, with its vivid descriptions of apocalyptic events, provides a framework for understanding contemporary calamities. Believers see the current tribulations as precursors to Christ's return and the establishment of his reign on earth. This eschatological perspective infuses their daily lives with a sense of expectancy and purpose, motivating them to prepare both spiritually and practically for the coming kingdom. Preparation for Christ's reign involves a multifaceted approach. Spiritually, it means deepening one's relationship with God through prayer, worship, and the study of Scripture. Believers are encouraged to cultivate virtues such as humility, compassion, and steadfast faith, embodying the teachings of Christ in their daily interactions. This spiritual readiness is seen as essential for standing firm in the face of adversity and for being counted among the faithful when Christ returns. Practically, preparation also involves tangible actions to withstand the trials of the end times. This includes creating emergency plans, stockpiling essential supplies, and building resilient communities. Churches and faith-based organizations play a crucial role in these efforts, providing resources, training, and support to help believers navigate the challenges ahead. The goal is to foster a sense of solidarity and mutual aid ensuring that no one faces the coming tribulations alone. The interpretation of these disasters as divine warnings also has broader societal implications. It challenges believers to reflect on their collective actions and their impact on the world. Environmental degradation, social injustice, and moral decline are seen as manifestations of humanity's defiance against God's will. By addressing these issues, believers hope to align more closely with divine principles and mitigate future calamities. This holistic approach to repentance encompasses not only personal piety, but also a commitment to social and environmental stewardship. Critics of this perspective argue that attributing natural disasters to divine retribution can distract from scientific and practical responses to such events. They emphasize the importance of understanding and addressing the underlying causes of these disasters, such as climate change, poor urban planning, and inadequate infrastructure. While these critiques are valid, many believers see no contradiction between practical action and spiritual readiness. For them, responding to disasters effectively and ethically is part of living out their faith and preparing for Christ's reign. The convergence of natural disasters and eschatological beliefs also fosters a deeper sense of community among believers. Shared experiences of suffering and survival create strong bonds of solidarity and empathy. These communities become sources of spiritual strength and practical support, helping individuals cope with trauma and rebuild their lives. The collective journey towards spiritual readiness and mutual aid reinforces the sense of being part of a larger divine plan, providing hope and purpose amid the chaos. The series of disasters in China serves as a potent reminder of the fragility of human existence and the consequences of defying divine principles. For many believers, these calamities are not merely natural events but are seen as divine warnings, urging repentance and preparation for the imminent reign of Christ. 
this perspective shapes their daily lives, infusing them with a sense of spiritual urgency and practical readiness. It challenges them to live according to biblical principles, to foster resilient communities, and to address the broader issues of environmental and social justice. Amid the devastation and despair, it provides a framework for hope, purpose, and a deeper connection to the divine. As the world faces increasing uncertainties, the call to prepare for Christ's reign resonates ever more strongly, guiding believers through the trials of the present and into the promise of the future. In recent years, the sky has become a canvas for extraordinary celestial phenomena that many believers interpret as divine messages conveying the urgency of the times and the impending fulfillment of God's purposes. Blood moons, solar eclipses, meteor showers, and unusual planetary alignments have captured the imagination and reverence of those who see these events as more than just astronomical curiosities. For many Christians, these signs are not random or coincidental, but are part of a divine narrative, signaling the imminent return of Christ and the culmination of God's plans for humanity. These celestial events serve as both a warning and a beacon of hope, tended to prepare and galvanize believers for the challenges ahead and to assure them of ultimate victory in Christ's reign. The concept of celestial signs as divine messages is deeply rooted in biblical tradition. Throughout the scriptures, the heavens are described as a means through which God communicates with humanity. In the Old Testament, the stars and planets are often depicted as instruments of divine will, announcing significant events or judgments. For instance, the book of Genesis recounts how God set the stars in the sky for signs and seasons. Similarly, the New Testament is replete with references to heavenly signs that herald the second coming of Christ. The Gospels recount how a star led the Magi to the birthplace of Jesus, while the book of Revelation speaks of dramatic celestial phenomena that will precede the end times. In contemporary times, these ancient beliefs find resonance among many Christians who view modern celestial events through the lens of biblical prophecy. The blood moons, for example, have been particularly significant. Occurring when the Earth's shadow casts a red hue on the moon, these lunar eclipses have been interpreted by some as signs of impending judgment and a call to repentance. Notably, the Tetrad of Blood Moons in 2014-2015, which coincided with Jewish feasts, sparked widespread speculation and eschatological fervor. Books, sermons, and conferences dedicated to interpreting these signs proliferated reinforcing the belief that these celestial events were divinely orchestrated warnings. Beyond the awe and wonder these celestial events inspire, their perceived messages are intended to galvanize believers. They serve as calls to action, urging Christians to deepen their faith, live righteously, and prepare for Christ's return. This sense of urgency is palpable in religious communities, where celestial signs are discussed with a mixture of reverence and anticipation. Bible study groups, prayer meetings, and church services increasingly focus on eschatological themes, encouraging believers to remain vigilant and spiritually prepared. The sense of impending fulfillment of God's purposes brings both comfort and motivation. For believers, the celestial signs are not just warnings of judgment, but also assurances of God's ultimate victory and the establishment of Christ's reign. This dual message of caution and hope is central to the Christian eschatological narrative. While the signs warn of tribulation and the need for repentance, they also affirm the promise of redemption and the triumph of good over evil. This assurance of ultimate victory energizes believers, fostering a spirit of resilience and hope even in the face of adversity. The impact of these beliefs is profound, shaping the lives and actions of those who adhere to them. The anticipation of Christ's return and the fulfillment of divine purposes infuse everyday life with a sense of purpose and direction. Believers are motivated to engage in acts of charity, evangelism, and community building, seeing these as tangible expressions of their faith and preparation for the coming kingdom. The celestial signs serve as constant reminders that their labor is not in vain, that their faithfulness will be rewarded, and that they are part of a larger divine plan. Moreover, these beliefs foster a strong sense of community among believers. 
the shared experience of witnessing and interpreting celestial events creates bonds of solidarity and mutual support. Religious gatherings and discussions about these signs reinforce communal ties and provide a sense of belonging and purpose. In a world often marked by division and uncertainty, the shared anticipation of Christ's reign offers a unifying vision that transcends individual differences. The belief in celestial signs as divine messages remains deeply embedded in many religious communities. For these believers, the sky is a testament to God's sovereignty and a medium through which divine purposes are revealed. The anticipation of Christ's reign and the assurance of ultimate victory provide a powerful framework for understanding the present and navigating the future. The celestial signs serve as both a wake-up call and a source of hope, reminding believers of their spiritual responsibilities and the promise of redemption. The signs in the sky serve as divine messages conveying the urgency of the times and the impending fulfillment of God's purposes. These celestial phenomena, blood moons, solar eclipses, meteor showers, and planetary alignments are interpreted by many believers as warnings and assurances, calling them to repentance, preparation, and faithfulness. They galvanize believers to live righteously, engage in acts of charity, and build resilient communities in anticipation of Christ's return. Amidst the challenges and uncertainties of contemporary life, these celestial signs offer a unifying vision of hope and ultimate victory, affirming the belief that God's purposes will be fulfilled and that the faithful will share in the triumph of Christ's reign. The second coming of Jesus Christ will be marked by his return as a mighty warrior king, a stark contrast to his first coming as a humble servant and savior. This future return is vividly depicted in the book of Revelation and other prophetic scriptures, where Jesus is described as arriving in power and glory to judge the nations and wage war against the forces of evil. The imagery associated with his second coming is dramatic and awe-inspiring. He is portrayed riding a white horse wearing a robe dipped in blood and with a sharp sword coming out of his mouth, symbolizing his authority to execute judgment and establish his reign. This portrayal emphasizes his role as the ultimate sovereign, who will reign over all nations with an iron scepter, bringing justice, righteousness, and peace to a world plagued by sin and rebellion. In Revelation 19, 11, 16, the Apostle John describes a vision of the glorified Christ returning to earth. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True, with justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This passage encapsulates the majestic and fearsome nature of Christ's second coming. Unlike his first advent, characterized by humility and sacrificial love, his return will manifest his rightful authority and power to judge and rule. The symbolism of the white horse is significant. In ancient times, a white horse was often associated with victory and conquest. Jesus' arrival on a white horse signifies his triumph over sin, death, and all the powers of darkness. His titles, Faithful and True, affirm his trustworthiness and the certainty of his promises. Jesus' eyes, like blazing fire, represent his penetrating insight and righteous judgment seeing through the facade of human actions and intentions. The many crowns on his head signify his supreme authority and sovereignty over all earthly and heavenly realms. The robe dipped in blood is a powerful image of Jesus' role as both the sacrificial lamb and the divine warrior. It harkens back to his atoning sacrifice on the cross, but it also points to the coming judgment, where he will tread the winepress of the fury of God's wrath. The sharp sword coming out of his mouth 
symbolizes the power of his word, capable of both creation and destruction. This divine word will be the instrument of judgment, striking down the nations that have opposed God's kingdom. The iron scepter mentioned in Revelation 19.15 signifies Christ's unyielding authority and firm rule. The concept of ruling with an iron scepter is rooted in Psalm 2.9, a messianic psalm that foretells the reign of God's anointed one. It conveys the idea of absolute power and the enforcement of divine justice. In the context of Jesus' second coming, it means that he will establish his kingdom with unwavering righteousness, ensuring that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. The rebellious and unjust systems of the world will be dismantled, and every knee will bow to his lordship. Jesus' role as a warrior king is also highlighted in the Old Testament. Isaiah 63, 6 presents a vision of the Messiah coming from Edom, with his garments stained with blood from treading the winepress alone. This imagery underscores the solitary and decisive nature of his victory over his enemies. Similarly, in Zechariah 14, 3, 4, the prophet foretells that the Lord will go out and fight against the nations, and his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, splitting it in two and demonstrating his divine power. The judgment that accompanies Jesus' second coming is comprehensive and final. Revelation 20 describes the great white throne judgment, where the dead are judged according to their deeds. This event signifies the ultimate accountability of all humanity before God's throne. Those whose names are not found in the Book of Life are cast into the lake of fire, symbolizing eternal separation from God. This judgment is not arbitrary, but is based on the righteous standards of God's law and the response of individuals to his offer of salvation through Jesus Christ. The reign of Christ that follows his second coming is often referred to as the Millennial Kingdom, a period of a thousand years where Jesus will rule on earth in perfect peace and justice. This reign is characterized by the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel and the nations. Isaiah 11one 9 paints a picture of this idyllic time where the wolf will live with the lamb and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. This prophetic vision highlights the transformative impact of Christ's reign, bringing harmony to creation and restoring the intended order. The implications of Jesus' second coming as a mighty warrior king are profound for believers. It assures them of the ultimate victory of good over evil and the establishment of God's kingdom. This hope motivates Christians to live righteously and faithfully, knowing that their labor in the Lord is not in vain. The anticipation of Christ's return encourages believers to remain steadfast in their faith, to proclaim the gospel, and to serve others with love and compassion. Furthermore, the expectation of Jesus' return as judge and king provides a framework for understanding the present struggles and injustices in the world. It reassures believers that, despite the apparent triumph of wickedness and corruption, a day is coming when every wrong will be righted and every injustice will be addressed. This perspective empowers Christians to endure suffering and persecution, holding on to the promise of vindication and restoration in Christ's kingdom. The doctrine of the second coming also serves as a call to repentance for both believers and non-believers. For believers, it is a reminder to examine their lives, to repent of sin, and to pursue holiness. For non-believers, it is a warning of the impending judgment and an invitation to receive God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The message of Jesus' return is therefore both a sobering warning and a gracious offer of salvation. The second coming of Jesus Christ as foretold in Christian eschatology is a momentous event that will occur after the tribulation, a period marked by intense suffering, persecution, and divine judgments upon the earth. According to biblical prophecy, Jesus will return in glory and power, defeat his enemies, and establish his millennial reign. This climactic return is described in vivid detail in the New Testament, particularly in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 19:11-16, Christ is depicted as a conquering king, riding a white horse, his eyes blazing with fire, and wearing many crowns. He is followed by the armies of heaven, symbolizing his authority and the certainty of his victory over the forces of evil. This second advent is not merely a continuation of his first coming, but a dramatic fulfillment 
of his promise to bring ultimate justice, peace, and restoration to the world. As such, believers are called to prepare for this momentous event by placing their faith in him, living lives that honor God, and fervently sharing the gospel with others. To fully grasp the significance of Jesus' return, one must understand the context of the tribulation. This period, often described as lasting seven years, is characterized by unprecedented turmoil. According to passages like Matthew 24, 21, 22, and Revelation 6 to 18, it will be a time when the Antichrist rises to power, natural disasters ravage the earth, and God's wrath is poured out upon humanity. This tribulation serves as a divine judgment on a world that has largely rejected God, yet it also provides a backdrop for the ultimate triumph of Christ. Amidst this chaos, believers are called to endure, to hold fast to their faith, and to look forward to the hope of Christ's return. Jesus' second coming marks the end of this tribulation and the beginning of his righteous rule. The defeat of Christ's enemies at his second coming is a central theme in eschatological prophecy. Revelation 19, 19-21 describes the final battle where Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, confronts the beast and the kings of the earth. With a word symbolized by the sharp sword coming from his mouth, Jesus will strike down the nations that have opposed him. This victory is not just a physical conquest, but a spiritual one signifying the end of Satan's dominion over the earth. This decisive battle demonstrates Christ's supreme authority and the fulfillment of God's justice. For believers, this assures them that all evil, corruption, and injustice will ultimately be vanquished. Following his victory, Jesus will establish his millennial reign, a period of a thousand years of peace, justice, and righteousness. This reign is depicted in Revelation 21 through 6, where Satan is bound and Christ rules with his saints. This time will be marked by the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel and the establishment of his kingdom on earth. Isaiah 11:1-10 paints a picture of this idyllic future, where the wolf will lie down with the lamb and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. During this millennium, Christ's governance will bring about unprecedented harmony and restoration, reversing the damage caused by sin and rebellion. Given the certainty of these events, believers are exhorted to prepare in three key ways, placing their faith in Jesus, living lives that honor God, and sharing the gospel. Faith in Jesus is foundational. John 14, 6 records Jesus saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This declaration underscores the necessity of believing in Christ as the sole means of salvation. By placing their faith in Jesus, believers are assured of their place in his eternal kingdom and are spared from the ultimate judgment reserved for those who reject him. Living for God is the second essential aspect of preparation. The Apostle Paul, in his letters, repeatedly urges believers to live holy and blameless lives. Romans 12, 1-2 calls Christians to offer their bodies as living sacrifices and to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. This transformation involves rejecting the patterns of this world and embracing a lifestyle that reflects God's will. Holiness, integrity, and love should characterize the lives of those who anticipate Christ's return. By living in a manner that honors God, believers not only prepare themselves for Christ's return, but also serve as witnesses to the transformative power of the gospel. Sharing the gospel is the third crucial way believers can prepare for Jesus' second coming. The Great Commission, recorded in Matthew 28, 18, 20, commands believers to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything Christ has commanded. This mission is urgent given the impending tribulation and the final judgment. Believers are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who have not yet heard, offering them the hope of salvation and the promise of eternal life. Evangelism is an act of love and obedience, reflecting the heart of God who desires that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Moreover, the anticipation of Christ's return should inspire a sense of urgency and purpose in believers' lives. Knowing that Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead 
compels believers to take their faith seriously and to live in a way that honors Him. This involves not only personal piety and moral integrity, but also active engagement in the world, promoting justice, mercy, and compassion. By doing so, believers become instruments of God's kingdom, reflecting His love and righteousness in a broken world. The expectation of Jesus' return also provides comfort and hope amidst life's challenges. The knowledge that Christ will ultimately triumph over evil and establish His kingdom gives believers a perspective that transcends their immediate circumstances. This hope sustains them through trials and tribulations, reminding them that their suffering is temporary and that eternal joy awaits them. The promise of Christ's return assures believers that their faithfulness will be rewarded and that God's purposes will be fulfilled. In addition, the anticipation of Christ's return fosters a sense of community among believers. The shared hope of Jesus' second coming unites Christians across different cultures and denominations, creating a global fellowship of faith. This communal aspect of eschatology encourages believers to support and encourage one another, to pray for each other, and to work together in advancing the gospel. The Church, as the body of Christ, is called to be a light in the darkness, proclaiming the hope of Christ's return and living out His teachings. The second coming of Jesus Christ is a cornerstone of Christian eschatology, heralding a time of ultimate judgment and the fulfillment of God's kingdom on earth. For believers, preparing for this momentous event is paramount and involves three fundamental actions, placing faith in Jesus, living for God, and sharing the gospel with others. These steps not only align with biblical teachings, but also provide a framework for living a life that honors God and anticipates His return. By embracing these principles, believers can ensure they are ready for Christ's return and can help others prepare as well. Placing faith in Jesus is the first and most crucial step in preparing for His second coming. Faith in Jesus means accepting Him as the Son of God, believing in His death and resurrection, and trusting in His promise of eternal life. John 3.16 succinctly captures this foundational belief. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This faith is not merely intellectual assent, but a deep transformative trust that affects every aspect of a believer's life. It is through this faith that believers are justified, made righteous in the eyes of God, and assured a place in His eternal kingdom. Moreover, faith in Jesus provides the strength and resilience needed to endure the trials and tribulations of life, especially as the world grows increasingly tumultuous in the lead-up to His return. Living for God is the second essential component of preparation. This involves embodying the principles and values taught by Jesus and outlined in the Bible. In Romans 12, 1-2, the Apostle Paul urges believers to offer their bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, and to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. This transformation involves rejecting the patterns of this world, which are often characterized by selfishness, greed, and moral relativism, and instead embracing a life of holiness, integrity, and love. Living for God means seeking to follow His will in every area of life, from personal conduct to relationships, work, and community involvement. It also involves practicing the spiritual disciplines of prayer, worship, and study of the scriptures, which help to deepen one's relationship with God and foster spiritual growth. One of the most significant aspects of living for God is demonstrating love and compassion to others. Jesus taught that the greatest commandments are to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. This love is not merely an emotion, but an active commitment to seek the well-being of others. It involves acts of kindness, generosity, and service, reflecting the love of Christ to those around us. By living in a way that honors God, believers serve as witnesses to the transformative power of the gospel and provide a compelling testimony to the reality of God's kingdom. Sharing the gospel with others is the third key element of preparation. The Great Commission, given by Jesus in Matthew 28, 19-20, commands believers to go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything he has commanded. This mission is urgent, given the impending return of Christ and the final judgment that will follow. Evangelism is not only a duty, but also a privilege, allowing believers to participate in God's redemptive work in the world. By sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, believers offer others the opportunity to experience the hope, peace, and salvation that come from a relationship with Him. Effective evangelism involves both word and deed. It requires proclaiming the message of the gospel clearly and compellingly, but it also necessitates living in a way that exemplifies the teachings of Jesus. In 1 Peter 3, 15, 16, believers are encouraged to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks for the reason for their hope, but to do so with gentleness and respect. This means being ready to share the gospel at any moment, while also ensuring that one's life reflects the love, grace, and truth of Christ. Authenticity and integrity are crucial, as a hypocritical or judgmental attitude can hinder the effectiveness of the gospel message. In addition to personal evangelism, believers can support the spread of the gospel through various means such as prayer, financial support, and participation in mission work. Prayer is a powerful tool that can open hearts, provide opportunities for witnessing, and strengthen those involved in evangelistic efforts. Financial support enables the work of missionaries and ministries that are dedicated to reaching the unreached and unchurched with the gospel. Participation in mission work, whether locally or globally, provides hands-on opportunities to share the love of Christ and make a tangible impact in the lives of others. The anticipation of Jesus' second coming should also instill a sense of urgency and purpose in believers' lives. The knowledge that Christ will return to judge the living and the dead compels believers to take their faith seriously and to live in a way that honors Him. This involves not only personal piety and moral integrity, but also active engagement in the world, promoting justice, mercy, and compassion. By doing so, believers become instruments of God's kingdom, reflecting His love and righteousness in a broken world. The expectation of Christ's return also provides comfort and hope amidst life's challenges. The knowledge that Jesus will ultimately triumph over evil and establish His kingdom gives believers a perspective that transcends their immediate circumstances. This hope sustains them through trials and tribulations, reminding them that their suffering is temporary and that eternal joy awaits them. The promise of Christ's return assures believers that their faithfulness will be rewarded and that God's purposes will be fulfilled. Moreover, the anticipation of Jesus' return fosters a sense of community among believers. The shared hope of Christ's second coming unites Christians across different cultures and denominations, creating a global fellowship of faith. This communal aspect of eschatology encourages believers to support and encourage one another, to pray for each other, and to work together in advancing the gospel. The Church, as the body of Christ, is called to be a light in the darkness, proclaiming the hope of Christ's return and living out His teachings. In practical terms, preparing for the Second Coming involves a daily commitment to spiritual growth and discipleship. This means prioritizing one's relationship with God, seeking to grow in understanding and obedience to His Word, and being open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It also means being vigilant against complacency and the distractions of the world, which can dull one's spiritual sensitivity and urgency. Regular participation in corporate worship, fellowship with other believers, and involvement in service and ministry are important practices that help to strengthen one's faith and keep the focus on Christ's return. In the face of life's myriad obstacles, prayer and faith emerge as profound sources of solace and transformation acting as conduits that bridge mortal pleas with divine compassion. These spiritual practices not only provide comfort in times of distress, but also catalyze significant inner and outer change. When individuals engage in prayer, they open a channel of communication with the divine, allowing them to express their deepest fears, hopes, and desires. This act of reaching out is not merely a one-sided plea, but a dialogue that invites God's presence into their lives. Through prayer, believers can experience a profound sense of peace and reassurance, knowing that they are not alone in their struggles. 
This divine connection offers a refuge from the chaos and uncertainties of life, grounding them in the assurance of God's unwavering love and support. Faith, on the other hand, serves as the bedrock upon which the efficacy of prayer is built. It is through faith that individuals can truly believe in the power of their prayers and in the benevolence of a higher power that listens and responds. Faith transforms prayer from a ritualistic act into a dynamic and life-changing encounter. It imbues believers with the confidence that their prayers are heard and that God is actively involved in their lives working for their ultimate good. This belief in divine intervention can be incredibly empowering, providing the strength and courage needed to face and overcome obstacles. It is faith that sustains individuals when immediate answers are not forthcoming, allowing them to trust in God's timing and wisdom. One of the most profound aspects of prayer and faith is their ability to transform the individual from within. Prayer often begins as a plea for external change, relief from suffering, resolution of problems, or provision of needs. However, it frequently leads to an unexpected and deeper transformation, a change in the person praying. As individuals persist in prayer, they often find their perspectives shifting. They become more attuned to God's presence in their lives and more aware of His purposes. This inner transformation can manifest in increased patience, compassion, and understanding. It can also lead to a greater sense of purpose and direction, as individuals align their will with God's and become more receptive to His guidance. Furthermore, prayer and faith can lead to tangible changes in one's circumstances. While this does not mean that every prayer is answered in the way one might hope, it does mean that prayer can lead to real-world outcomes. Countless testimonies across cultures and generations attest to the miraculous changes brought about through prayer. These stories range from healings and provisions to seemingly impossible situations being resolved. Such instances reinforce the belief in a compassionate and responsive God who intervenes in the lives of His creation. However, even when prayers are not answered in the expected way, the act of praying itself can lead to a sense of peace and acceptance as individuals come to trust in God's greater plan. The communal aspect of prayer also cannot be overlooked. When believers come together to pray, whether in small groups or large congregations, they create a powerful synergy. This collective act of faith can be a source of immense strength and encouragement. As individuals draw support from one another and from the shared belief in a caring and omnipotent deity. Corporate prayer can also lead to significant community and societal changes. As believers unite in seeking God's intervention in larger issues such as social justice, peace, and healing for their nation. The Bible, in Matthew 18:20, underscores this collective power, stating, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This promise of God's presence in communal prayer underscores the transformative potential of faith practiced together. Prayer and faith also play a crucial role in personal resilience. Life's obstacles can often feel overwhelming, leading to feelings of hopelessness and despair. However, prayer can serve as a lifeline, offering a way to cope with and rise above these challenges. Through prayer, individuals can find solace and strength, enabling them to endure hardships and persevere in the face of adversity. Faith, meanwhile, provides the assurance that there is a higher purpose at work, even in the midst of suffering. This belief can instill a sense of hope and optimism, motivating individuals to keep moving forward and to seek out the lessons and growth opportunities embedded in their struggles. In the face of life's myriad obstacles, prayer and faith emerge as profound sources of solace and transformation, acting as conduits that bridge mortal pleas with divine compassion. These spiritual practices not only provide comfort in times of distress, but also catalyze significant inner and outer change. When individuals engage in prayer, they open a communication channel with the divine, allowing them to express their deepest fears, hopes, and desires. This act of reaching out is not merely a one-sided plea, but a dialogue that invites God's presence into their lives. Through prayer, believers can experience a profound sense of peace and reassurance, knowing that they are not alone in their struggles. This divine connection offers a refuge from the chaos and uncertainties of life, grounding them in the assurance of God's unwavering love and support. 
Faith, on the other hand, serves as the bedrock upon which the efficacy of prayer is built. It is through faith that individuals can truly believe in the power of their prayers and in the benevolence of a higher power that listens and responds. Faith transforms prayer from a ritualistic act into a dynamic and life-changing encounter. It imbues believers with the confidence that their prayers are heard and that God is actively involved in their lives, working for their ultimate good. This belief in divine intervention can be incredibly empowering, providing the strength and courage needed to face and overcome obstacles. It is faith that sustains individuals when immediate answers are not forthcoming, allowing them to trust in God's timing and wisdom. One of the most profound aspects of prayer and faith is their ability to transform the individual from within. Prayer often begins as a plea for external change, relief from suffering, resolution of problems, or provision of needs. However, it frequently leads to an unexpected and deeper transformation, a change in the person praying. As individuals persist in prayer, they often find their perspectives shifting. They become more attuned to God's presence in their lives and more aware of His purposes. This inner transformation can manifest in increased patience, compassion, and understanding. It can also lead to a greater sense of purpose and direction as individuals align their will with God's and become more receptive to His guidance. Furthermore, prayer and faith can lead to tangible changes in one's circumstances. While this does not mean that every prayer is answered in the way one might hope, it does mean that prayer can lead to real-world outcomes. Countless testimonies across cultures and generations attest to the miraculous changes brought about through prayer. These stories range from healings and provisions to seemingly impossible situations being resolved. Such instances reinforce the belief in a compassionate and responsive God who intervenes in the lives of His creation. However, even when prayers are not answered in the expected way, the act of praying itself can lead to a sense of peace and acceptance as individuals come to trust in God's greater plan. The communal aspect of prayer also cannot be overlooked. When believers come together to pray, whether in small groups or large congregations, they create a powerful synergy. This collective act of faith can be a source of immense strength and encouragement, as individuals draw support from one another and from the shared belief in a caring and omnipotent deity. Corporate prayer can also lead to significant community and societal changes, as believers unite in seeking God's intervention in larger issues such as social justice, peace, and healing for their nation. The Bible, in Matthew 18.20, underscores this collective power, stating, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This promise of God's presence in communal prayer underscores the transformative potential of faith practiced together. Well, that's all about today's video. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye.